Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and I am here with the last four SCPs before I stop going in order or from um um to to what or if I want to stop. I want to stop at one hundred. Just seems like a good even number to stop at. Anyway, today we are with ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety nine, and one hundred. Starting out at, please leave a like on the video. Oh, subscribe to the channel and comment down below. Starting out at 97, we have Old Fairgrounds. Item number SCP 97, Object Class Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. SCP-97 is contained within the limits of the property where it was initially discovered. Zone SCP-97. This property is surrounded by an 8 meter tall concrete block fence, fitted with barbed wire and security camera systems. Satellite images of Zone SCP-97 are to be doctored, removing all traces of the area. Any and all new plant growth outside the containment area suspected to originate from within the SCP is we sterilized through application of boiling salt water and or incinerated. Absolutely all abnormal behavior is reported to Dr. Bridge within 10 minutes of occurrence. If any person or their families experience hallucinations or thematically related dreams outside of containment, they are to contact Dr. Bridge to schedule treatment. Localities surrounding SV-97 specifically redacted are to be monitored from the 1st of April until the 1st of November every year for affected civilians. Mill establishment into dealing with sleep abnormalities are to be monitored for signs of SCP 97's influence. Civilians below the age of 16 encountered alone within the one square or kilometer of SCP 97 are to be taken into foundation custody and to be treated with a Class B amnestic and returned home. Or the nearest police station. Personnel tasked with the return of civilian it's are to avoid public exposure. Each agent is assigned to a it's to be assigned a cover store, eat to follow if they do encounter civilians en route to their destination. See Level 3 staff for details. The morning after the first frost us of, of the year, a team of 25 agents armed with agricultural tools are to enter or SV-97 and clear away the outer plant matter. This process is not to continue past dusk. Description SCP 97 is a 10 acre or area of land and in the state of redacted in the Midwestern United States. It is the abandoned and remains of the redacted county fair 1969, an area of approximately 2.3 kilometers squared, approximately 5.4 square miles. Structures within the ASV area exist in a state of moderate disrepair consistent with the expected age and environment. At the center of SCP-97 lies the remains of a 1956 GMC pickup truck, majority of which is crushed beneath a colossal pumpkin of unknown subtype. Henceforth, SCP-971. SCP-971 stands approximately a 7.4 meters or 24.3 feet tall and 81 meters or 26.8 feet in diameter at its widest. Current estimates put SV971 at approximately 1500 kilograms, approximately 33,070 pounds. This pumpkin remains roughly spherical in shape instead of spreading out under its own weight as would be expected of a plant of this size. The remaining portion of SCP-97, approximately 2 kilometers, is overgrowth with several dozen and varieties of pumpkins, with over 70 ESO species yet unidentified and many uh, previously unknown unto agriculture. Many of these pumpkins have been shown capable of growing to enormous sizes, the, estimated, the average estimated weight being around 250 kilograms or 550 pounds. These pumpkins, along with the assorted other crops, grow with it on and around the remains of the 969 fairgrounds, creating a maze-like arrangement of plant life. The average height of the walls within SV-97 is 1.6 meters, though this may vary from year to year.
Between uh, April and November each year, the area within SV-97 has produced a number of anomalous phenomena, ranging from benign to implicitly aggressive. To date, seven agents have been severely immune within SV-97, eight having died. See event log SV-97 for a brief listing of recorded phenomena. Hopefully it's as brief as they say. I'm just gonna say event number and then the event. This is a general incident log for SV97 for a cycle oh, between November and uh, I mean September and November on a certain year. I'm guessing this is an abridged version. Please request. Right, acquisition full individual reports from Dr. Bridge. During this time, served, four civilian and children were captured and returned to their families. This is not as brief as I thought it was going to be. Anyway, then one. Cameras 3B, 4A, A, 4C, E, 5B, you a child approximately four years of age, walked between tangles of flat matter toward SV971 over an eight minute period. Child appeared to be dragging a stuffed animal. Notes. Child appeared on footage during review. Appeared no figure was viewed at the time of, the, of recording. Human scream heard from within SV-97. Heard throughout the site. Ontai personnel described it as possessing a small child's voice. Sustained for approximately three minutes before stopping abruptly. Left before feeling as if they were being watched during the event. Event 3. Several Obed sheet ghosts are seen through various security feet. It's throughout the day, but only appear for approximately one to three seconds before vanishing again. Staff did not re report seeing any anomalous entities firsthand. Patrols doubled for the remaining time in, SF in the SV cycle. Event 4 Unidentified singing is heard throughout the site, persisting for three hours before becoming silent. Recordings reveal sound like gibberish, with up to 30 individual children's voices singing at any time. Recordings are archived for thirty for further study. Agent McGroy cuts a confined with machete. Set a very and begin to lead approximately fifteen liters of human blood before shriveling. Blood type A B, no DNA match. Overnight, two separate pug just grew into the rough approximations of humanoid figures laying on the ground. Destroyed without an incident. Agent Long found decapitated, neck against a pumpkin. Disappeared en route for, to, uh, to a restroom rest break. All light bulbs on site burn out within a two minute period. Critical areas repaired before nightfall. Sun shift node and the location of several dozen gourd plants. Time and nature of actual event is unknown. Agent Cole accidentally damages and breaks pumpkin during weekly examination of SV-97. The window is open, revealing a complete human and child skeleton in a fetal position within. Female, approximately 5 years old, no DNA match. 29 freshly decapitated crow was found outside SV-97's containment wall. Matured pumpkin plant found to have replaced a pod plant growing inside. Back to Bridge's office. Indoor plants banned from the site. Bumpkin incineration incinerated immediately. Agent and Matthew was falls unconscious during patrol and could not be woken until removed from property. Agent re reported a dreaming of autumn colors and the smell of leaves. Full recovery. Reassigned to desk work pending examination. Research assistant Sturm reports overwhelming taste and scent of pumpkin permeating her senses. No other personnel report anomaly. Transferred off-site, examination pending. Sounds of steady drums playing throughout the day from midnight to oh, almost midnight of the next day. Source of sound unknown. Recordings are cry I've for further or future study. Male child, approximately six years of age, in clad in pajamas, seen climbing through corn stalks on the eastern end of SV-97, moving towards SV-971. Lost to SV-971, how the child was Able to escape notice by personnel, though oh, he was lost to the SCP, is unknown. All personnel within and 
six kilometers of SCP-971 report hallucinations of orange hay and his and children's laughter. Personnel evacuated to a distance outside the area of effect. Personnel screened for mental interference. All power and backup power to the area failed upon recovery. Blank pumpkins within SV-97 were found to have changed into carved lanterns. It is unknown how SV-97 generated and lit candles. Team Alpha and T-97 Alpha and Beta attacked to destroy lanterns after sunrise. Team 97 Alpha reports seeing and hearing children playing among the floor within SV-97. Recordings lack the energies is expected from the reports. Drone no uh, to be clad in pajamas, teams pulled from SCP. Screen for mental interference. Z Maids and Doric and Doratic are not fall from in the sky around SV-97. This is not fall within in containment walls. Eric and Swift flame units and replanted with non-native grasses. Pavement of outside area ending. Research assistant Elta will be overcome with nausea and vomits pumpkin seeds. All two did not eat pumpkin seeds previous to vomiting. Research assistant Elta will transfer to site blank for examination. Seeds incinerated with prejudice. Research assistant Elta will report to have died overnight. Autopsy reveals erotic cavity was filled with pumpkin seeds. Body incinerated at site blank. All personnel, oh, scheduled for full of physical examination. Unintelligible, unintelligible whispering gibberish heard by a fertile fer female personnel throughout the area when in, in view of SV-97. Phenomenon continues throughout the day, entering for the duration of SV-97's cycle, i.e. until November 1st. Associate personnel removed from duty and, and scheduled for examination. Headlights a vehicle all underneath SV-971 light and stay lit until daybreak. Fruits root trees within SV-97 blossom over the course of 5 hours, beginning at roughly 7 a.m. Flowers wither and fall soon after. Hopkins' south entrance to SV-97 begins spontaneously bleeding from the stand. Each continued bleeding for 3 hours. Blood type AB. No DNA match. Several dozen unidentified spheres of red light at a few drifting across above SV-97 and surrounding area. When light was shone directly on the spheres, a piercing shriek was heard. Personal called into the main building until the spheres dissipated at dawn. Sounds of sight drums are recorded from within SV-97. Drums persist for the following 12 hours. No source identified. Recordings archive for future study. All strawberry plants within SCP-97 wither in unison. Between 25 and 30 inanimate human skeletons of various size are recorded breaking out of larger pumpkins within SCP-97. As the skeletons traverse through SCP-97's floor to the northeast, patch each tree and hang themselves from its branches using the lips of grapevine. Electrical old cable and decaying rope. Scouts have ceased anomalous behavior after our path demanding death by hanging. Death throws continued for approximately 23 minutes. Skeletons ends recovered after first frost. All appeared under 12 years of age. No DNA matches. Skeletons incinerated after examination. That's odd. <sighs> Of them. Historical note. Prior to the construction of SCP 97's containment walls, instances of what are now known as SCP 2171 1 were occasionally observed to form fragmented walls, and at one point, a, a near complete ring of 2171 around SCP 97's area of effect. This behavior ceased following the containment walls' completion. The purpose and implications behind this interaction are as of yet unknown. Effects of SV-97 on children, in addition to the, its immediate uh, effects outlined in Event Log 97. SV-97 appears to produce an undetectable signal towards children in an undetermined range. For clarity, children will, will refer to individuals up to the age of 10. Used to be 8. Beginning in early April, civilian 
in children with an SCP-977 unidentified range may be overcome with uh, with some embolism on clear nights. After effects of children on roof around their homes, solving to face closed doorways for several seconds before moving to the next the nearest doorway, which is returning to bed. At first, this, uh, this behavior will occur only once a week, beginning with only the doors on, on a single floor. The sleepwalking will become more frequent by mid-August, happening every night. If forcefully woken at any time during these episodes, they will scream for several seconds before succumbing to a degree of confusion. After an affected child is woken in this manner, the effect will cease and the child will never show any further signs of SCP-97's influence. Over the course of two to three months, these episodes will become a more or thorough, affected individuals seeking out each doorway inside at their house, as well as those on their household's property, such as garages, car doors, and fence gates. Eventually, they will begin visiting the front doors of neighbors. Beginning in September, affected children who have remained undisturbed during these episodes or will begin to remain outside at sunrise, lying on the grass near their homestead and returning to full REM sleep. Affected a children may recall dreams centering around autumn activities. Between September 1st and November 1st, if the affected children have not awoken during the proceed during the preceding sleepwalking episodes, they will cease the previously established activity during the sleepwalk and instead begin to walk directly towards SCP-97's location. They will travel over fields and down secondary roads, slowly moving towards SCP-97. Local geography consists mostly of undeveloped foundation-owned property, facilitating uninterrupted travel. Upon arrival at SCP-97, an affected child will sit down before SCP-97 one and begins singing unidentified gibberish as music. It begins to play. While a number of instruments have been recorded, simple drums and pipes are most consistently encountered. After several minutes, childlike entities will crawl out from the tangled floor or break out of large pumpkins within SCP-97. The children will be wearing whatever they were last seen with, most often pajamas or similar clothing. Many of these entities match those who are known to be lost to SCP-971. The entities will surround the affected its villain child, dancing and singing in a circle as SV-971 begins to emit dim light. The affected child will awaken, normally expressing a great deal of terror. The instant any vocalization is produced, the entities will swarm and kill the child. Methods its use are, are different in each instance, but usually involve dismemberment or strangulation. At this point, any and all efforts to interrupt the entities will fail. Whether through breakdown of equipment, sudden intangibility of the subjects, or express violence on the part of SCP-97. After the death of the affected child, SCP-97 was split open and the entities were hurled the remains into it before climbing into it themselves. SCP-97 and 1 will then close and the music will stop. Before the containment walls was erected, at least blank children between the ages of 3 and 10 are known to have been lost to SCP-97. See event log SCP-97 for current examples of SCP-97's behavior. Now we have SCP-98, Surgeon Crabs. I have a number, SCP-98, I'm after class, safe. Special Caterium Procedures Members of SCP-98 are to be kept within a 10 meter by 20 meter room with small pools of water and the sandy substrate. Rice and driftwood are to be left in a random range before SCP-98 to nest in. The enclosure is to be cleaned on a weekly basis. During this time, I'm SCP-97. All members of SV-98 are to be accounted for first, to prevent injury or death to first now or SV-98. Any members of SV-98 that appear ill or injured are to be removed and examined. Description: SV-98 is species of previously unknown crustacean. They resemble old crabs, but rather than ankylae, the front limbs are terminated in knife-like structures that incorporate a silica to form an extremely striped edge. Specimens reach larger size than normal for land dwelling arthropods at 40 cm tall and as large as 60 cm across. Specimens of SCP 98 prefer an environment with, ne 
with ready concealment and shallow pools of water. They are able to breathe both water and air, spending their, spending their time between the two environments. They also are capable of vocalization using a larynx-like structure attached to primitive lungs. SV-98 demonstrates pack hunting behavior when attacking prey. When specimens attack a prey animal, they will, will attempt to uh, surround it. They will mimic the sounds made by the creature, apparently to confuse it or to draw it into position. When ready, one specimen will approach the prey animal, as it is fixed on the first specimen. Others will remove, will move behind the prey and attempt to cut the tendons of the legs or other limbs. They will continue to mimic the sounds the prey animal makes to this is oriented. After making a cut, a specimen of SV-98 will spit a big viscous mucus over the wound. This of this heart ends rapidly, preventing blood loss or infection. This continues until the prey animal is completely immobilized. At this point, specimens will begin to feed on the prey animal by cutting off small pieces of flesh. This begins with soft, readily accessible tissues, such as those in the face and extremities, before moving to other parts of the body. The specimens of SV-98 it will only feed so long as prey animals is capable of respiration. Feeding can last several hours or several days, depending on the size of the prey animal and the number of specimens present. Specimens of SCP-98 show some ability to communicate, alerting each other to the presence of threats or potential food over short distances. It was initially thought that SCP-98 might display human-level intelligence, but are now believed to be merely to merely parrot human speech. SV-98 normally poses little threat to adult humans, preferring smaller prey, such as dogs, cats, and small pigs. However, they had, have attacked larger prey when a sufficient number of specimens were present, or, or else other food was unavailable. SV-98 was discovered in Blink, Brazil after a rash of childhood disappearances. Addendum 98.1 SV-98 is more intelligent than previously thought. They adapt quickly to changes in their environment, have shown an ability to remember patterns such as eating and cleaning in times, and have actual moments of personnel entering their enclosure. Think personnel must ensure that they regularly vary their routes through the enclosure to prevent incidents. Dr. Mann has taught several of them simple tricks. They seem to understand the meanings of several commands. Testing will continue. Now we go to SCP-99, the portrait. Item number, SCP-99, object class safe, special containment procedures. SCP-99 is kept in a 1 meter by 75 meter centimeter wall mounted fireproof case in Gallery 27. Sand climate and humidity controls apply to this section of the gallery. Due to its properties, SV-99 can only be viewed within the gallery by level 2 staff or higher, and only for a distance greater than 5 meters, and for a period not to exceed 5 minutes per day. When not being viewed, the case is, re is remained and shut and electronically locked. <sighs> Description SCP 99 is a 73 by 50 centimeter painting tile by Old The Portrait, created in 1935 by a realist painter, Irina Egret. The original painting possesses mimetic properties that trigger acute paranoia and lingering psychological effects when viewed for too long or from a distance of approximately 3 meters or less. The paintings depict a simple still life with the addition of a single eye staring back at the viewer. A reproduction of the work currently hangs in the Museum of Modern Art in New York, with critical elements removed to prevent the paranoia a tr a trigger. For a detailed uh, description of the changes, refer to document 99B. Detailed reproductions and photographs of the original work will retain its memetic properties. Those who have viewed the painting for too long or from too close of a distance become subject to the delusion that any being or depiction of, of a being with eyes is staring at them. In extreme cases, subjects report that inanimate objects are making eye contact. 
The condition is so severe that setups will be over for making eye contact with individuals whose heads are completely turned away. Depending on the length of the original exposure to the painting, so this may suffer from this condition until death, resulting in severe epinoria and oclophobia. Addendum SV99 was recovered from the private collection of K. Sage, another surrealist painting. Er, recovery was performed by SCP by MTF Data 6. Ms. Sage was unaware of the recovery and replacement of SV99. Out of pre recovery investigations, Address you was aware of its properties and was either immune or careful not to look too closely. Nagar was still alive at the time SCP-99 was stored in Gallery 27. He remained under he remained under surveillance under Foundation surveillance until his death in 1967. Research suggests that the painting's vague treasure was intentionally created, although the effect and power of the trigger was likely un unintentional. The Foundation has studied the rest of Margaret's work and found no anomalous mimetic properties to this state. And finally, we have SCP-100, also known as Jamaican Joe's Junkyard Jubilee. Item number SCP-100, Object Class Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. SCP-100 is to have six guards patrolling the interior of the perimeter fencing, and two guards dedicated to the monitoring of the interior and exterior of both warehouses and the residential building, with rotations to occur every three hours. Any author unauthorized personnel within SCP-100 are to be attained for questioning prior to amnestic administration and release. Three guards are to remain within the storefront of SCP-100, with rotations to occur every eight hours. The storefront entrance is to remain locked at all, at all times, with keys provided to necessary personnel. Private property and no trespassing signs are to be posted on the front of the storefront to deter any drivers from stopping at SCP-100. Any e contracts SCP-101 and creates are to be removed from SCP-100 and melted down into slag with the exception of SCP-102-A and SCP-102-B. Should SCP-101 become uncorruptive, SCP-102-A and SCP-102-B may be removed from SCP-100 until the time that SCP-101 becomes corruptive again. The largest of the two warehouses within SCP-100 has been converted into a basic research facility. All of this created by SCP-101, excluding SCP-100-2A and SCP-102B, may be used for research purposes. Testing on SCP-101 itself may, be may only be conducted with version for permission from the acting head researcher. Description SCP 100 is an abandoned and scrapyard at, at 80 kilometers from Blank, South Carolina, known as Jamaican Joe Ozark and Jubilee. The scrapyard or it covers roughly 5,000 and square meters of fence off land, consisting of two warehouses, a storefront, and a residential building, as well as, as neglected land and land used for storage. SCP 100 holds Roughly 1,500 vehicles, as both press and unpressed, as well as roughly 1,400 kilograms of separate scrap uh, estimated to be worth $5,000 or 3,870 euros. I think that's euros. I don't know. I'm not European. Sorry. SCP-100 is anomalous effects manifest through OSV-101 and its constructs, including SCP-100-2A and SCP-102B. Autonomy is lost when SCP-101 or one of its objects cross the events perimeter of SCP-100, remaining in the state until reintroduction. SCP-100-1 is an autonomous, sapient humanoid construct consisting mostly of copper piping and 
uninsulated copper wiring and aluminum cans. SCP-101 lacks the ability for written or verbal communication, however it possesses the ability to communicate using rudimentary sign language. SCP-101 is largely unaddressed in conversations outside of cells. And information gathered from it has been limited. SCP-101 virus 100-1, I'm making it sound like I'm saying the next one, appears to possess skill and craftsmanship. Demonstrating the ability to operate tools such as arc welders, grill, drills, and power saws, as well as heavy, as well as heavy machinery such as car compressors and forklifts. Okay, I'm gonna call this um, you know what? their name is Wally. Wally possesses the ability to create autonomous as creations similar to itself using materials available within SV100. Wally tends to create a four specific animals, iguanas, crocodiles, turtles, and flamingos. However, SCP, however, Wally has been known to create apt other species such as domestic pets to maintain compliance. Wally has been allowed to keep two objects, labeled SCP-100-2A, which I'm going to start calling the mittens, and SCP-100-2B which I'm going to start calling slimy. Minutes of slimy are constructs superficially resembling insects, assumed to be created by SCP-100. As they have occupied SCP-100 since the initial discovery of SCP-100, the names Ramon and Beatrice are... Oh, they have names, sorry. Will it on to, into the backs of uh, of Ramon and Beatrice, respectively. They appear to operate aid as both companions as well as guards for SV-100. As they patrol the appear, perimeter of SV-100, except during intervals of interaction in with Wally. Wally appears to follow a ritualistic schedule, repeating the same actions daily. From 8 to 3 p.m., SCP- I mean, Wally enters the storefront of SV-100, seeing itself behind the counter and attempting to bargain with any humans with in the storefront. Occasionally, a Wally will return to the yard prematurely for reasons unknown. From 3 to 4, Wally interacts with Ramon and Beatrice. I already forgot, dang. Communicating using a vague hand and arm gestures. Interacting interaction sets to consist of grooming, repair, and activities resembling fetch and hide and seek. From four to eight p.m., S. Um, Wally performs various tasks, including taking stock of material within SV100, cleaning, and maintaining tools and heavy machinery, and cleaning the interiors and exteriors of buildings present within SV100. From eight to midnight, Wally performs what is assumed to be luxury acts, ranging from creating new constructs, interacting with Ramon and Beatrice, and patrolling SV-100. From midnight to 8 a.m., Wally enters the a residential building, where it remains seated at a desk for the duration and of this time. In the event that a human enters the storefront of SV-100 during the interval of time SV-101 is seated behind the counter, SV-101 will attempt to bargain with them, using a variety of gestures to convey meaning. Most attempts by SV-101 are to sell scrap, figures of its own creations, or repair services. However, it has been known to purchase scrap. Despite SV-101, Despite Wally's inability to read, it possesses the ability to perform basic mathematics as demonstrated by cells. Cells made by Wally are typically met with some degree of unfairness. Wally has been known to intentionally use faulty scales and contaminate scrap house with cheaper metals and has demonstrated a knowledge of the area of effect within SV-100 as, as, as Wally has sold contracts repeatedly despite the loss of autonomy when exiting SV-100. Efforts to confront Wally about this have been met with both distress and indifference, with referral to a signpost on the wall, 
or reading in no refund spawn, happening regardless of Wally's emotional response. <sighs> SV-100 was discovered on November 9th, 1976, I'm guessing the year, or is it 1900 and not the 1800s, or some earlier or century. Anyway, the learning reports of strange machines operating from within the scrapyard. These rumors were, were discredited as urban legends, and a foundation agent was sent to SV-100 to act as the landowner until the container was formed under the guise of, of property sale. A wooden privacy fence was built along the former perimeter of SCP-100. One-way windows were installed on the storefront, and a highway now running through the nearby town of Blank redirects the majority of civilian traffic. Addendum 100A. Records show all the property is owned by one Joseph Duval, with the mailing address sharing the same name. Local utility companies report building Inc. had stopped approximately three months before the discovery of SV-100, which was found abandoned, save for Wally, Ramon, and Beatrice, and several a avian and canine and, and figures presumably made by Wally. The initial sweep of the buildings found revealed the resident edge of buildings to be mostly bare, but the only sign of former occupants being a note taped to the, the door of the storefront. See document 100A. Incident 100A. On June 3rd, 2005, Wally created a humanoid autonomous construct 10 centimeters in height. The first sign Wally had sun zone, significant effort was put into this construct compared to others. It greater detail applied to the construct including facial features and JJ welded it into the back of the construct. And Zane is still making up the majority of the construct. Wally placed the construct on the counter of the sore front for the duration of the scan or the interval, using both vague dressers to seemingly communicate with one another. Following the confiscation of his contract, Wally remained seated within the residential building of SV-100 for a total of 10 days. Document and 100A. The following is a copy of the note recovered on assignment of upon discovery of SCP-100. Out to lunch. Please see assistant. J J. Hmm. Anyway, that is a. Uh, SCP-97, 98, 99, and 100. And with that, we have finally gone through the first 100 SCP articles. And from here on, I will no longer be going in order one by one of the SCPs. I will be covering whatever object and or article that I wish in whatever order I wish. As this has taken a long time to do. Hopefully that means more interesting SCPs will be on the channel rather than an SCPs that might not be so interesting. If you enjoyed this or any of my SCP videos, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below. I'll see you next time with I don't know, and I like that. We'll see, won't we? Goodbye.